Order Slackman, official clerk, call the meeting to order. Uh, start with department heads. Richard? Yeah, um, we've been working a lot up in Washington Hill the last, few, the last week and a half, so uh, doing a bunch of calls and replacement, a bunch of ditching. We still probably have another four or five days of doing, getting ready for next year when we do the first phase of it, yeah. half of it. And it's new equipment and work. Let's say we have another four or five days of it to finish it up. <coughs> and do some call, some more call work around uh, Great Hill, too. We placed a few more work around there. And, mm -hmm. storm damage, which is kind of nice. And I would like to say that I thank you to Richard Colton and his guys. They've been very helpful in the mm -hmm. summer. They've been there, traffic controls, helping us. You know, we're not waiting for the week. I just I think that should be acknowledged. That's um, good. And this guy, the volunteers have gone way above. I think they have to, and I really appreciate it. It's good that departments work together like it this. Is. Yeah. Yeah. It's just good. Helps out. Anything from the board? Nothing? Excellent. Good. Thank you. Could have used today's weather on Peace Hill Road, I'll bet. <laughs> oh, brutal. Kim? Oh, already? <laughs> um, well, I Cat usually takes longer. It's a toss-up between you two, but I'll let you go first. I just wanted to show the board and bring in um, the records that were preserved under the Moose Plate grant. Mm -hmm. oh. Got them back. Um, and in speaking of that, um, I know at town meeting there was a uh, 250th committee had that the dollar amount the town voted to uh, have the foundation match that yep. money as well as um, the foundation in August 1st to 16th for their fiscal year um, had stated that they would take any uh, any unrestricted donations and match those mm -hmm. also to go to the preservation of the records. So in total, I think it was just under $80,000 that the town will have to work with through the foundation for the preservation of records. So, and we can apply for mo more Moose Plate grants. I can do that. However, under the Moose Plate grant, um, there's it's very it's limited to what what can be done mm -hmm. with those monies. Um, whereas there wouldn't be any limitations per se, other than <coughs> making sure it's going to the for preservation the records, of the yeah. records. But um, so I just wanted to let you know that those were were back. Good. Thank you. Yeah, it might be worth applying for the Moose Grant again for their yep. restricted and then <clears throat> right. Use this and they, help um, from the I had applied for three books initially. They honored two of them, mm -hmm. um, and and whether they felt the volume six didn't need that much uh, preservation work, or there could have been another town that was more in need mm -hmm. of something to be done. So, but they did they did do volumes four and five for us. Is this the work where you also get everything in digital form? Yep, we, uh, we did a CD, the digitalization of, of both volumes, as well as the, the state under the Moose Plate grant requires uh, microfiche, microfilming, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. So um, we do have a copy of that, although we don't have a microfilm uh, reader ourselves, but the state gets a copy for there for the, at the state library for there. I thought that was another grant to get the microfilm reader. Which you get yeah, exactly, that's right. <laughs> that's I just wanted to make you aware of that. that. We don't want a microfilm reader. <laughs> Thank you. It might be coming nice back. Yeah. Thank you, Kim. Do we have anything else for Kim? Pat, you're up. I have, I have two things, and they may take a moment. The first one is um, to set a date, which I'm hoping will be September 19th, uh, for the uh, solar energy talk, mm -hmm. and for Darlene to let... If I can interrupt for one minute. Yeah. Um, the 19th, she can meet at 7. Good. And she can meet on the 18th as well, which is a Monday, earlier, but she didn't give me a time. I love the 19th. So the 19th, we'll shoot for that, and I will ask the other boards. Okay. I'll invite the other boards, and I'll confirm with her the 19th at 7. That's true. Okay? That's, that's uh, Joe Sorrell, right? <coughs> yes. That's okay. Yep. <coughs> That's correct. 7 p.m. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Be, if all the departments will <coughs> we'll find out how many people are actually going to come. Okay. 
And if we need to, we can go down the, yeah. down the townhouse. Good. If you pack them in, Pat, we'll find a big enough venue for you. I like it. So we'll, we'll, mark, we'll market it to make sure that they come. This could be the next big event for the this DDC. Could be big, but I'm going to get ready for this for that, too. <laughs> um, but anyway, the other one is a little bit more complicated. Uh, that is that um, it, for a few years now, when I've been going to these regional things, mm -hmm. and they've had... Like what's wrong? What things can we do to improve the economy in the region, in the state, in in northern part, all that? And one of the issues that I push a lot <coughs> is that um, only certain t towns in the southern part of the state were allowed to offer a tax credit. Yes. And when Jeff <coughs> spoke at the annual meeting of the LRPC a bit ago, he mentioned it a little bit, and then I've been researching it some more. And um, what happened was that a coast county um, applied to have their county al be allowed to have their towns <coughs> do this, this tax credit. And it ended up in the legislative <coughs> bodies that they said, well, it's a good thing, and why don't we do it for the whole state? And it is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, House Bill 316, and I think, I'm not sure if I want to do it with you or not. Yep. And so the thing is, it okay. does require, it's flexible in that each town, and I'm not saying decide this moment, but what I would like to have happen is that after there's some uh, conversation about this HB 316, that after there's conversation over maybe several meetings or whatever, uh, you can tailor it the way you want to, and then it would be a warrant article that's in town. And like, in other words, it's over a certain number of years, mm -hmm. or how many jobs are going to be done, uh, and it's particularly excellent for a company that's expanding and adding people. And there is one that's going on in our state right now, I mean, in our town right now, um, where they expect that they will be having at least half their property and business bigger, so 50% more. And they expect about 10 full-time jobs and many, many, many jobs in the construction of the addition. Um, and I had said to him, uh, we've been sort of talking, and I'm meeting him tomorrow morning, actually. And I would said to him, that this new bill has happened. And I said, so when the time is appropriate, depending on what the selectmen do about this, that he would then come in, or representatives of his company would come in to request a tax credit. Okay. Um, and whether it's a five-year tax, and the, and the way that works is, say that there's an assessment of the property now, or whenever, and um, whatever they do to make it bigger would then say it's 50% uh, bigger or 28% bigger, who knows? What's the difference between what it is right now mm -hmm. and what it would be assessed at with a new thing? And it's that difference that they would have the tax credit. So it isn't like it's stealing from the town because the town didn't have it yet. So, but 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 after a certain number of years, whatever you said, then they would be paying the full amount. Mm -hmm. But it gives them a break. It's encouraging companies to expand. It's so similar it's to that tax program you had brought up a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. But this is this is really great and I'm really proud of our government uh, for making it happen. Right, we get two of them. I know I see I see yeah. them. So they can they can assume that I'm giving them a hug that I'm saying thanks. <laughs> but anyway, that's something I'm hoping <coughs> that you all consider seriously so that when warrant articles start happening <coughs> we can talk about how should it be structured, what are other towns doing yeah. for structuring their format. And if say you didn't like the way it was after a year Let's make it happier or bigger, or let's make it less so you can do that again. Yeah, and other than that, economic development meets on the 12th of September. And um, our next event, we think, will be the middle of November or beginning part of November. And that will be a tech forum. And that's to help people, um, <clears throat> small companies and individuals, or entrepreneurs market their, their entity better with um, either Facebook or Instagram and teach them how they can create them and, and market themselves. I'm Good. Done. Thank you, Pat. Do we have anything from the board for Pat? Would, is the tax thing, does it require a town meeting approval? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it would be a warrant. Be a warrant but article. scope and... And, and uh, availability and 
minimum, maximum, number, whatever would have to be decided well before. Right, you have to have that decided, you know, squared away for a warrant article of 90 days before town meeting, so we get it figured out before middle of December. But, I mean, I, I definitely think it's a good thing. I like this house bill a lot better than the TAC thing because we get a lot more freedom there to tailor it to our town. So I think that's a good thing. Thank you. All right. No more department heads. We have uh, Philip Bryce here to discuss Irene's Way and all of the stuff that has gone along with it. And if you'd like to introduce who's with you. Sure. Um, good evening. Chairman, member of the board, town administrator, Phil Bryce, director of the Division of Parks and Recreation in uh, uh, the Department of uh, Natural and Cultural Resources. And with me, I'll let Tracy introduce herself. Uh, sure. <clears throat> Tracy Bowyer with the uh, Division of Forest and Lands um, Bureau Administrator, Land Management Bureau Administrator. Um, relatively new in the position, about two and a half months. So I'm just beginning to, to learn, understand the, mm -hmm. the issues here, and uh, our bureau is responsible for land, um, you know, administering land acquisition, surplus land, working through land management issues similar to this. So uh, first, um, I'd like to thank the town for the patrols that the police department did this summer. We really greatly appreciated that. The staff told me that they didn't have near the level of um, unacceptable behavior in the park that they've had in past years. And of course, that could be just the nature of people going, but I think there's no question that having that presence makes a big difference. So I wanted to thank you for that very much. Um, and secondly, I'd just like to, to start out by saying our intention through this whole process is not to, uh, you know, shut off public access to the lake down Irene's Way. You know, I think that <coughs> some people were concerned about that. That's never been our intent. It's, you know, in our letter of June there, we just, you know, talked about the issues that we wanted to, to uh, deal with and move forward on. So... Um, so uh, I had sent a letter along uh, with our understanding of the follow-up from the last uh, meeting, and as it turns out, there was a, there, apparently there was a significant misunderstanding around what the intentions were going forward, and so I, um, I was asked if I'd be willing to come to the, one of the meetings to discuss that, and I said, certainly, be glad to. So. Excellent. Appreciate your coming. I mean, that's one of the things that I think both sides are looking forward to is as we move forward, you know, more open lines of communication. Um, we had the meeting back, I think it was June. It's all sort of run together. We had a lot of these. Um, you know, when we discussed that we were waiting for you guys to send something back and we would from there go and find middle ground, and we got that. And uh, a few weeks later, uh, a resident was... Uh, uh, written and told, I'll look for the exact verbiage here, but in effect he was uh, in violation of having moorings on the lake, and the moorings, I've even said publicly, are not something I'm looking to defend at this point, but uh, what we had for concerns at that point, it was that it was so close on the heels of what we thought was our agreement to hold status quo. We had Jeb and Mark and the other representatives and executive counselor here, uh, that we try to sort of hold status quo and work together and not push because I don't think any of us want to want to see it get to the point of a uh, a fight uh, between town of Tamworth and Department of Recreation here over who owns Irene's Way, um, and so we had followed up with you guys with a response that we were just curious, you know, what had happened, what had prompted that, because again, I think I'm speaking for the three of us. We thought everything was was staying status quo and whatever was at the lake, I think had been at the lake. Um, what would you like to add, Steve? Um, <clears throat> I, I was under the same impression that uh, Senator Bradley's um, <clears throat> media, mediation based uh, um, uh, solution to the thing, which I believe uh, Mike McConkie and Jerry Kinnerick and and uh, Ed Butler and Joe Kenny thought it was a pretty good idea too. It was going to be status quo, and I, because I live in this town, perhaps my idea of status quo was different from uh, from the park department's um, 
you know, maybe we've been spoiled by a string of um, employees and management at the uh, at the lake where folks, local folks, are treated overwhelmingly respectfully by the by park staff and always have been. And uh, so we agreed to this thing, and <clears throat> we had a case of a individual out picking up litter at the east end of Irene's Way who was told by a Forest Service person, I think, or I don't know, lands, that uh, they had no business, this is state property, no business, and get off. I don't know the exact words, but it was not sweet. Uh, we have a, as you know, <clears throat> I'm sure you know, we have a very vocal, very involved, and very angry and substantial percentage of our population who are, for the most part, concerned about access to not only White Lake 12 months a year, and maybe not between 10 p.m. and dawn, but, but uh, and there's a num number of folks who see the, uh, the surprise, you know, we, we were, <clears throat> a little background here, we, there was some strife between the Board of Selectmen previously and the park management um, to, who were talking about uh, securing the place and <clears throat> some bad behavior at the east end, especially uh, adjacent to the group camp, or not, not exactly adjacent, but within earshot of the group camp. Right? And uh, so <clears throat> at least uh, some of us apologize to the one of your re current regional managers for, but that was based on a long-serving uh, or person well steeped in the history of of the town and the park and et cetera, who um, said that the state was looking to take that road, <laughs> and of course that was dismissed six <coughs> or seven years ago. Oh, it couldn't be, and. Uh, <clears throat> We were upbraided for a less than hospitable working relationship, and that was accurate. Um, in the last couple of years, at least some of the folks in town and people from the select board have gone to the park management, regional manager, current regional manager, and apologized for any rudeness or uncooperative effect, and invited, you know, let's work on this together. And we thought that's what we were doing, and then we got a uh, surprised that, uh, I don't know, we got it in June or April or whenever we got a piece of paper that said, oh, by the way, we own the road, we went to so-and-so and didn't get it reclassified, but we got it, um, we corrected it. Um, <clears throat> so who owns the road is an underlying issue here, but Senator Bradley and all the rest of us uh, agreed, thought that we certainly have to prepare for that fight, but now's not the time, although it's coming, and I'm pretty sure the town will support the expenditure of funds uh, to do that. We've got a ton of stuff. I mean, just a ton of stuff. We've got maps that these folks have set up so that we can use an HDMI card and put them on a 50-inch TV flat screen, and it, you know, it comes out, and they've got historic references and they've, we've got anecdotal stuff and we've got, I mean, just a ton of stuff and we're quite sure that we know uh, there's more coming the uh, most recent one was the Conservation Commission who were concerned about <coughs> access to I trust that you both have read um, Outdoor Adventures in Mount Washington Valley which has, I think White Lake State Park is the only place that has two uh, entries in that educational, environmental, recreational thing that's out of print, but you can still buy it for four hundred and fifty dollars on Amazon, or you can get one across the across the street here, and uh, and and those reference um, the Black Spruce Pond uh, Trail and and uh, that uh, our conservation commission and your your uh, national natural landmark. Also, the the main access is Highlands Way and beyond. So, we've got a hornet's nest that we're dealing with, and rightly so. An awful lot of people think that the magic 
reclassification was. I think surreptitious would be a, um, a compliment in, in terms of how folks feel. So, you know, we're doing that. But I thought we were doing that in a, when there was going to be a status quo while this was all worked out. And, uh, you know, I, we've had, I don't know of anyone who's had trouble with a park administration or a park employee, but there are some state employees who have decided that they'll not <laughs> not uh, practice status quo. That, uh, you know, when, when one of our residents is getting thrown off or picking up litter, that's, that's not the way to do it. The thing with the moorings is we believe that the permitted moorings are for the big six. And although there's folks doing the research on that, I, it's beyond me, you know, to, to uh, cite that. And the moorings, I, you know, maybe we can work that out something else. But um, this is, we, we expected that um, things would be the way things were. Well, the dust settled, although we understand the closer, we have a history of Tamworth police responding to calls in, that, uh, in the past and in the area. It's hard to follow that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Would you like me to respond? Yeah. yeah um, so uh, on the surreptitious nature of the change in the classification, um, we had expected to hear from DOT. We sent them over information, sort of like, well, this is what we found. You know, would you look into this for us? Expecting that they would contact us. And they just did the reclassification. So I want to make it clear there wasn't, we sent them information, and we had expected to have another conversation. I've, I've verified that a couple of times. So it wasn't like we want to try to, to do something underhanded with the town of, of um, Tamworth uh, it was like, wait a second, we, we know this issue's come up, we've done some research, we wanted to check with you guys on why is this in statute and it's not, you know, on your on your list correctly, and they told us it was, you know, it was an error. So um, so they, they just went ahead and corrected it and didn't didn't contact us. Regarding the, um, whoever was telling somebody they couldn't pick up stat trash, I'd be very interested if you can give me a date or something that I can track that person down because that was completely inappropriate. And I will follow up with my <coughs> staff, whether it's in um, my, within parks or within the agency, because that's not how we expect to, tr to treat the public. Um, and certainly look into it, well, why, why did you do that? So, um, uh, and make sure, and I'll pass along to the staff that, you know, as they know, and I think we're pretty good at customer service and treating our visitors with respect, and, and so that I'm very surprised to hear that. Um, and then, regarding the information that you have, uh, you know, regarding the ownership of Irene's Way, we we have just to understand. I I was not looking, as lovely as it is up here, to spend my evenings, you know, here dealing with this. We just have an obligation as an agency, and much in the way you feel you have obligations as a town, to um, uh, to make sure we provide stewardship to the resources with which we're entrusted, and. That means making sure that we continue to hold the rights that we believe we hold. So it's nothing against the Tam Tam town of Tamworth, nothing against people's access to the lake. It's just a long-standing issue that's been out there that has not been resolved, and it happened to, you know, hit when I was when I was here. So I, you know, would like to get it resolved, and, I, and I'm hopeful we can get it resolved. Certainly, it's up to you whether or not you want to provide information relative to ownership to us so we can say, yeah, you know, we went over this with the AG's office and said, absolutely right, that's going to be it. Or if you want to, um, you know, hold on to it and not show us that information, we've pretty much, I think, shown you everything that we, we have. Um, but that aside, as, as you point out, we were very hopeful that we'd be able to, like, work this out without getting the road, road issue. And it's rather unfortunate uh, that coming out of the last meeting, the context for the discussion about keeping things the same for us was not putting a gate up. 
and that was the only subject that we thought we were talking about. We didn't discuss moorings. And we had already been in the process with the AG's office with dealing with moorings. And it's unfortunate, and I apologize for not catching that, that key point. We should have reiterated at the end, and I'll know to try to do that. But we thought it was just about the gate. You know, not, not gating it um, and, and letting it go for a couple of years, uh, check in next spring, say, how did we do? Well, it appears this year we did, did well. Uh, and uh, and not um, and and not have to take that that step uh, in the effort to move forward, so that maybe we can make some improvements. And I was talking to a gentleman out in the parking lot about you know better signage and you know a lot of opportunities to make that a more friendly site. So um, so that brings me to the uh, um, specifically to the moorings. Um, we've been doing a lot of research on moorings, um, both in house and also in conjunction with the. AG's office, and the mooring, the moorings are uh, what I call littoral rights that go with the owner of the fee, the fee land. The so if you own, if you have title to the property, those those rights come to you under in New Hampshire. So you have the right to. Uh, so you would have the right to have a mooring off of your property. And uh, you, you also need to have a minimum of 50 feet of ownership in order to allow that. Uh, an easement or right-of-way um, is not sufficient to, uh, to, um, to provide you with more rights. You have to be grant, granted more or less specific, specific language in a deed in order to ensure that you have that right. And this is what I've been told by the Attorney General's office. Because they, they are telling us you need to get, you know, have the moorings removed. That it wasn't done in the past is whatever. But uh, they, they're telling us that we, we need to have them removed because the people don't have the right to have those moorings, moorings there. And um, so what it comes down to is if, if the town shows that it has the right to allow public access to get to the water, what that means is it that doesn't give that underlying littoral right to have to allow somebody to put a mooring in because you don't have the fee ownership it's a, it's it's the ownership of the, the the fee ownership is the ownership of the park and the other part of that is is when we we recognize that's a it's a wonderful thing for the people that have the moorings but we try we're not always entirely successful I'll admit but we try to be fair to the public as a whole we're we're we if we have a if we if we are going to grant a limited right to someone, um, either we have to try to create that opportunity for we try to create opportunities as much for everybody equally, so it's fair. We don't limit access to one person or another group or whatever. We try to create access for everyone. Or if let's say we give somebody some sort of exclusive access, so it's like we have events. You know, we we usually those events we like to have recreation based, but they provide us with financial resources so that we can then turn around and invest those back in the park because we're, as you know, we're self-funded. So in the case of the moorings, you know, as the owner, underlying owner of the fee, we're very concerned that we have somebody that's getting a special exclusive use, you know, for the use of the lake, uh, which is wonderful, um, but it's not accessible to everyone. So even if we, even if the state wanted to put moorings in, We'd have to, what do we do, a lottery or something in order to do that. We don't want to do that because we want to maintain the character of that lake. And so, uh, and we want to support people, um, certainly people that are coming in with their boats, you know, day in and day out, but not having a boat sitting out there in the middle of the lake or boats or whatever it is all the time. So that's our logic. Um, we've done a, a lot of work with uh, several people at the AG's office to confirm that that's the... Um, that that's the situation regarding the mooring, and they have been telling us for quite some time, in fact, for several years, you need to get those moorings, you know, you need to get the moorings out of there. And they gave us instructions on how to do it, and it just has not been done. Um, so that's the logic behind that. So it's unfortunate that we had the, that, that you're, and I checked, again, I checked with Commissioner Rose, I said, I got a note back from, from Darlene, I said, she said that, you know, it was going to be everything as it was, is that, you know, is that, Correct, and he said, because I was I was concerned that I missed something. He said, "No, we were just talking about the gate." So, um, so that's that's unfortunate, but that's the reason that the letter was written the way it was written. It was our our 
you know, lack of uh, um, uh, com not coming out of that understanding exactly the same thing. So um, that's that that was unfortunate. So we're coming in sort of to the end of the season. Um, I, 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 I unless we have like. Terrible things and camping is slowing down. That section of the campground gets closed over Labor Day, after Labor Day. So, you know, obviously there's going to be nothing happening with a gate this year, and that we still hold to, um, you know, not putting any gate in the spring for next year either. But we do have the, the, the mooring issue. Um, and the reason I gave you, I apologize for all that other background, but to try to convey that the road ownership and the mooring. Are two different things, and and by, you know, uh, that that you 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 uh, just just because the, the town, if it, if it unfortunately were to go to court, were to 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 uh, show, you know, rights to the road, then that doesn't give rights. To, you know, those are the Toro rights that I was talking about. So, um, so f as far and I know understand the boats are gone. Um, but we're still under, uh, you know, we're still under the direction to have those moorings, you know, removed. The and boats so, are gone. Pardon? The boats are gone. I under uh, uh, Art. Because uh, it was there the other day. Art texted me that that boat, boat was gone. Okay, good. So, um, so we were glad to hear that, and and it and it again, <clears throat> it's not that those are bad people for doing that. If I had the opportunity to do that, and, and I had a boat, which I don't, which is might be a good thing. I I would I would take advantage of it as well. So we're not criticizing those people for wanting to uh, take advantage of that situation at all. It's just that we we have an obligation to inform to to follow up on our responsibility as a, as the the stewards of the property. Yeah. And I personally don't have an issue with the mooring. The moorings became a piggyback issue to the road, fighting for access, unrestricted access is really what you know got this started and. Just like you said, you didn't come into this, you know, looking to fight with the town of Tamworth. The town of Tamworth certainly didn't look to, to be going into a fight with uh, Dread or Parks or the White Lake State Park. Uh, I mean, it started the way it started because no parking signs went up a couple of years ago that weren't ours, which ruffled feathers in town, brought it to our attention. And that's how we got to this point. Um, but yeah, to maintain that that access. I mean, my personal preference is to see if we can't follow the recommendations of Senator Bradley and, and try to kind of hold status quo. We left here with a different idea of status quo than, than you folks did, so we do need to get that cleared up. Mm -hmm. uh, and like you say, the season's ending. This might be a good time of year for us to be able to sit and hammer it out. You guys aren't busy there, and things quiet down for us for like two or three weeks before budget season. So. They don't. They seem not to quiet down for us anymore. So, if you'd stop taking roads, it'd be a lot quieter. <laughs> <laughs> we could have saved you six or eight weeks. Right, right. right. If we didn't have people trying to take roads away from us. Uh, and, and I agree with you with the morgues. I don't think that they should be there. I think that they should be removed. Um. So it the the things I'd like. The, the, the areas of concern that, that we have is, is the moorings. I think with the support from your police department, although we never had the meeting and the agreement, but I know our night patrol person was out there and he said he saw them coming through the park quite often. So I think we're good there. The, 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 on, the only other issue I think that people might be concerned about is, you know, turning that into a swimming area. And we've heard of complaints from people who are trying to launch their boats and people won't get out of the way on the little sand part so that they can get their boat in the water. And we, uh, we, are, we, want, we want to actually enhance that site and talk to you and folks out there to provide uh, parking, adequate, you know, make that a boat, you know, a boat launch, basically, like it should be. And, and um, uh, we'd like to move forward with that. Um, and, uh, and I don't think that that other use of making us, having it as a swimming area is, uh, is consistent with, you know, with that, that purpose. And again, and, and that's why I wrote in the administrative rules, because we're the underlying fee owner, while you might have access to the lake, it doesn't, 
provide opportunity <coughs> for a beach unless you have something in your deeds that, that allows you to do that. And I think in, in order to, for folks, you know, in the state who would like, who, who want a place to go uh, and swim and go often, um, we have a state parks license plate and it costs 85 bucks a year and you get, you get into White Lake all season. So you can go down every day for 85 bucks for the whole year. And uh, we've, we've seen the growth go up like, I don't know, 400% over the last few years in those license plates. And that is kind of our way of, of making our parks accessible to New Hampshire residents, to their local park on an ongoing basis. And all that money comes back into parks. So it goes back into White Lake, would go back into paying to build parking lots down at Irene's Way. Um, and, uh, and so we would really urge uh, folks to, to consider doing that. And to me, that's sort of the, the, you know, the solution regarding, well, you know, we want to go to the beach all the time, but we can't, just can't afford to pay you know, you know, $5 a day. And this, that's for the car. So it's not, that's, that's, your car gets in free. So whoever's in the vehicle gets in. So you save if you've got two kids and, you know, several, a couple of adults, you know, you're, it pays for itself in a pretty quick amount of time. Um, uh, and, and as well as being able to use it at the Seacoast beaches and throughout the state. So I would urge that. But those are sort of the two big areas that we have concern, um, you know, that, that we're, that was uh, reflected in my letter regarding our right to continue to enforce our rules because the moorings are administrative rules, the beaches are administrative rules, and, and go forward. But as far as the gating, we don't, we don't plan on um, doing that, um, you know, next season as we agreed to. And, uh, and I'd like to move us more towards working together to enhance the site and make it accessible to the public. I agree. That's a good idea. I, my whole rant about the uh, um, ownership of the road is an underlying issue in this town that, you know, we address it besides what you're talking about. I think it's a good idea. I also think it's a good idea to not have folks swim off the east end of uh, uh, Irene's Way for uh, safety reasons because the, uh, the wading depth is long, but it goes pretty, pretty quickly um, and pretty precipitously to the, the <clears throat> that 40 foot, what's listed by, in the state is 40 foot or 48 foot of water in the central part. And folks sometimes get in trouble. We've, we've, right, and, and it's tough on our lifeguards. You know, we had a case up at, um, up in a, a lake up north where somebody drowned across the lake, not where the lifeguard, they were swimming away from where the lifeguard area is. And it was, it was, it's tough when they're charged with that within the swim lines and there's somebody off swimming and they run into trouble on the other side of the lake. And it's going to be, take a while for them to, it, it makes it, it makes it, and that's part of the reason why we have it. So we can take care of the people that are in the park. And, um, um, that was a that was again very unfortunate, and it ha unfortunately, it happens more often than it should. So, um, so that's you know, I, I refer you back to the the letter uh, regarding our concerns. Certainly, the whole issue of the hours at the gate, you know, trying to keep it open and open it up early for fishermen and stuff. That all goes away if we don't have to put a gate in. Of course, later in the year, we leave it open for the rest of the year for the for the fishermen in the winter. Um, you know, we can look in the future of investing in a pit toilet out there. Um, which, you know, if there's a lot of folks, that's always, we find that's always a nice amenity to have. Um, so that's kind of the direction we would like to go. It's a boat launch. <clears throat> you mentioned in the past car talk boating, but it's not it, trailing motorized yeah. boats. Yeah, we're, we're, there, is there a horsepower limit on that lake? Just in no way restriction. I, actually, no I think there is not. Yeah, okay. but no way. I, yeah, I always thought there was. No. Uh, it's um, there's not a headway yeah. only. Yeah, that that came out of our records, but yes, we we trailer boats is in fact that's one of the issues is it's awkward down there, not a lot of space to to do that, and we can work being as we've discussed being environmentally sound to figure out a way to get 
people to be able to unload their boats safely and quickly and park. So, and then the issue, the only other issue is people walking to the park and not paying. But that's not your problem; that's ours. So, the, uh, not having folks swim off that the end of that road is t tough to uh, well, t t tough to enforce. Yeah, we we will we are working on that. Um, because uh, uh, we're working on trying to develop. We do not expect the town to enforce that. I want to make that clear. That's our, I mean, we could, we could enter into an agreement with you to do that, but I, as I've said in earlier correspondence, we do not expect the town to enforce our administrative rules other than those that you would like to use to support your, any enforcement actions you're taking, you know, within our rules. And we sent you the rules. And so it could be that, y yes, you want the added, benefit of being able to enforce um, a noise, our noise rule or self-endangerment rule or whatever it might be, you can do that. But we don't, we will, we will take care of that and uh, um, the swimming piece. And I'm very appreciative that you understand the concerns that we have regarding that activity at the end of the beach. The end I, mean, of the I, I understand the concerns of not wanting people swimming there twofold. It inhibits the boat launch, there's concerns on a lifeguard. Um, I'd wonder if, you know, for your end, because it is yours to enforce us on the lake as far as the lifeguard stuff, putting up a sign that says no lifeguard on duty, but you're never going to stop, you know, the, the grandmother, grandfather that brings their little kid to go and wait out there because it's one of the most shallow spots around. And that's one thing that I'd hate to see is somebody chasing somebody with their little three-year-old I, I chasing think, out. I think that I, I agree with that. I, I The last set of rules that we did in, in the department uh, parks, I believe, are actually less restrictive and more clear than the previous set. And it's we just don't want people swimming. I mean, if people are going to go out and wade, that's fine. They're not going to be sitting in chairs preventing people from getting in. And But sometimes you have, as, as you know, I think in the town, sometimes your rules are, have to be sufficiently clear. They can't be fuzzy about, well, wading how far, you know, what are you wearing, you know. And, and so we just... You know, no swimming, but, you know, if people are doing that, I will make sure the staff is aware that that's fine. They can do that in any of our parks on any of our lakes. But if they're going headlong into the water, then, you know, then, uh, then we start to get concerned. But I agree with that. And I know I've mentioned it, you know, may have been taken as tongue-in-cheek, but I, I am sincere, and I know you can't make the decision here. Um, but we talk about unfettered access to the lake for the boat launch. I'm sure that the $85 license plate is a hell of a deal, but given that that lake resides completely in the town of Tamworth, and realistically the town of Tamworth gets very little financially out of it, I would uh, really push and ask that you consider anybody who's a resident and has a resident permit sticker on their windshield be admitted in free of charge. Probably a hard sell, but I feel better for putting it out there that I'd like I to know, see it. I understand it, and That's if I was where you are, I would be saying the same thing. I mean, so. If I was on there, I'd be wanting to get every dollar <laughs> I could. So. We, we're trying, though. We're trying to accommodate residents. So, um, I'm I'm not clear about the <clears throat> police and fire um, agreement that was that sent from your office. Yes. Yeah. I sent the I sent the rules and I sent a sample of the agreement that we enter into with the town, which allows you to take. That's and we can work with you on that. We can actually send somebody up to sit with with uh, whoever you would like us to to work through that. Um, it, what it does is it's not a requirement. It gives you the authority because you because you, you have I think you have the way I understand it, you have the authority to enforce uh, statewide laws on. On um, on our property, any law enforcement officer in the state can enforce, you know, state law with respect to certain behaviors. But when it comes to town laws or parks laws, you know, town laws don't apply. Parks laws, you would need the authority to do that. And a couple of years ago, um, a few years back, they put a, a law in that allowed us to do this to grant the authority to the towns to enforce park rules. And the state collected 50% of the fines that were collected. And I went back a couple of sessions, uh, I think two years ago, and asked that the 100% of the fines go to the town. Because they said, 
they're the ones that are bearing the burden of this enforcement, and they should get all the fines. So we're trying to, you know, so so you can take a look at that, and if you have questions and want want I, us to I work do. through, because we because we we work with we have several towns that do it. Town of Rye does it. Uh, uh, great chief, he um, he uses it a lot, and he has all his um, summonses set up, you know, and and. We have it set up so you can go to court rather than having it go through the administ. Normally, our rules go through the administrative process, so they come in front of the commissioner if there's a contest. But the way they've got it set up now is they can actually just process it through court when they're over there doing other business. And I appreciate you know you sending that stuff along, but I personally am not going to sign any sort of uh, agreement for enforcement because, to my mind, if we say we're willing to go by your rules on that road. That's admitting that it's not our road. So, well, is there something already uh, uh, historically, and to this day, frequently, the first response to an emergency call out of that park has been the chief of police or Tamworth Rescue, or um, you know the the especially on weekends when the park is full of true B is out in the roads, um, you know, and, and uh, for the last 20 years, I would think uh, the, the Tamworth, uh, 2 o'clock in the morning when Irene, rest her soul, had to have somebody leave that park, sometimes standing beside her was the Tamworth chief of police and a true B, uh, uh, a true B. <coughs> Uh, so uh, this is common to have the the police yes. show up. I mean, as common as Tuesday, where our, our patrol our sergeant was the first one <clears throat> in in the park at the, with that incident, and uh, and the the trooper was he was coming from farther north and came down with a and stayed with a guy, but the. But our guy processed that entire thing, removed people from the park. It happens all the time. Emergency situations where, you know, cops in a state secure the scene and do crowd control. That was, <coughs> and I, it was the Tamworth chief of police who, who you'd get first um, at the scene, including water accidents and et cetera. So, I mean, there must be some. There must be something, or you don't need, either. We don't need what we've got here, or well, they're doing it anyway. Uh, it, state laws. We go and enforce state laws. Sure. Yes. Park laws are completely different. Except administrative laws. Administrative laws are completely different. And and I, you know I don't have the I don't have the list, but I'll, I'll read the list. But for example, if somebody is underage drinking in it, that's a violation of bet. state law. You bet. We can enforce that. Right. Right. Possession. Correct. Right. But if there's some kind of administrative park rule, we can't enforce that without a signed agreement. And I wouldn't suggest that we would enforce that. I wouldn't want our police department getting involved in that. Like no, like if we have no swimming, you know, or correct. Um, oh yeah. Or the, you know, I'm not sure what the state trash laws, but our, you know, it could be our trash laws or noise or things like that. So, so right, you do have the right. There are. It's not to say you don't have the police, uh, the, the law, local law enforcement does have, doesn't have law enforcement authority within the park they do for state laws. And, and what about removal from the park at 2 o'clock in the morning because of uh, unacceptable behavior? I mean, that, that we're used to having them. <laughs> we appreciate you doing that. Okay, I didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> so do all the other folks that were in the park that night. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have some hesitation about telling our soon-to-be chief of police, whoever he or she might be, sooner rather than later, um, what what they should. I, I would think that anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're that. we're we don't often. We I've never heard us raising questions about the actions of one of the local law enforcement officials taken in the park. So, I, I, and I asked to find out if this is if the agreement that you came up with is is necessary for the. Not for that. Uh, are we all set? Agreement? The, the letter of agreement, have we done that yet? No, I'm going to. 
Not yet. <laughs> we're still, I mean, I, I feel like we're on better standing here. I think we all understand each other. Uh, I'll give you a second, just a minute, uh, Kevin, but uh, there's two people higher up the food chain than me. If Mark or Jeb, if either of you have comments you'd like to, to share. Sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, good evening. A couple of things. Um, you know, it was interesting to hear the exchange between the two of you about uh, the $85. So here's an idea. Why don't you make a Tamworth resident pass for like 40 bucks? You'd probably sell four times as many. I know it sets a precedent for other places, but it, you may raise more money than trying to charge 85 bucks. People in Tamworth open, they're getting a deal and they want to contribute to the running of the state park. So just a thought on that. Um, I'm glad to see that there's agreement on the moorings and the, uh, the swimming. I think the law on the moorings is maybe not crystal clear. Your administrative rules are. And clearly, they have the authority to enforce that. But there seems to be agreement. Again, as I said a couple of months ago, I think the, I know everybody wants to, um, you know, prevail on their point of view on the ownership. I get that. I'd like to own it too. Um, you know, you'd like to own it. You'd like to own it. The fact is, we're all New Hampshire citizens. Let's figure it out. And not fight the fight because somebody wins, somebody loses, everybody's angry, and that's just not conducive to solving this. And the last thing I, I recognize that you know I'm just looking at the letter, <coughs> July uh, July 17th letter. I think from what the discussion I've heard, <coughs> points one through four are fine. It's the last one that seems to you know have at least the chair a little bit um, concerned about signing an agreement reserves the right to enforce all rights and rules with respect to the park. And if I'm hearing you correctly, I think that's the thing. So, Phil, what I'd suggest you do is just go back with your attorneys, work with their attorneys to restructure that language a little bit so that everybody, you know, can feel comfortable Tamworth not signing away things that they believe they have, you not signing away things that you believe you have, maybe time limit the agreement for a couple of years um, to try and, you know, get through this bridge. Because my belief is you're already making a lot of progress here. Somebody who's kind of, you know, in the middle and always takes bullets from everybody from all sides. I, I get the feeling that we're reaching pretty close to a resolution here that works for everybody as long as there's not a fight about who owns the, the property and and it starts with communication and that's obviously what you're doing discussion about the gate is gone that's great discussion about you know how to enforce you know reasonable behavior over there is going well so there's a lot of agreement here which I think you know Mark and I feel pretty gratified about um, build on that and try to have the lawyers work out that last sentence, um, you know, to make it acceptable to you, Phil, and Jim, to you. Those would be my suggestions. I appreciate that. Uh, and uh, being on the <coughs> lower end of the legislative scale, I'll be quicker. <laughs> Once you move out, yeah. you get more time. No, I, I totally agree with Jeff. I'm tickled to death that it's working. I agree on the morning stance. Um, I was thinking on the same lines of, uh, of a partial payment. I, I own one of those plates for the state park. Mm -hmm. It's the best value you can have going in and out of anywhere. But I think it would be interesting to know how many people in Tamworth really, and maybe Pat's outreach could find out how many people really would like to have that all access all the time. And perhaps there's some way we could do something with a sticker attached to a plate or something mm -hmm. else legislatively to make that happen. And, and I think Jeb's right. I think there'll be a, a little bit of a windfall there, and the people would feel better. So, uh, if, if you get a chance to poll people and see, if, you know, maybe people really, maybe it's ten or twenty people, maybe it's you know two hundred. But um, I think that's I think that's a great idea, and we'd be happy to work on that. Uh, I think it's nice to have the director back, and I, I agree with most he said. And I know we're still a little bit of loggerhead on that road. 
Um, if everyone wants roads, I've got roads I'd like to give to both of you. We'll let us see where they are. They just, they just don't happen to go into that to the lake, so thank, thank you for the opportunity. No, I appreciate you know, you and Jeb for, you know, continuing to show up in the support in this. You know, and as far as fighting for the road, uh, we only fought because we felt it was a way to preserve the access. I don't think any of us here are looking to own anything, especially as a town, but uh, I really like the idea of the, the $40 pass, because that might go over pretty big here. A big thing here in Tamworth is, you know, our money staying local, and, you know, you buy the, the plate, yes, it gets you into all the other ones, too, but something specific to Tamworth might be a a good thing, and I think it could go over. But, uh, Jim, can I comment on the plates? There is a decal plate that's coming out, and I know right now it's more specific to Veterans Association or the fire or whatever. Um, just kind of along that idea, I don't know if it needs to be a license plate or what kind of, you know, whatever. But just we'll leave that. this one up to you, Kim. Yeah, you yeah, get the moose grant, you can figure this out. Bill, are you authorized to be able to do something like I suggested to give a resident of the town? A state park is in a discount. I, I, in that case, I would probably have to go to fiscal committee in our fee package, and then when we, in order to do that, I'd have to look and see if the legislation allows us to do that. We can set our fees uh, by by uh, through the fiscal committee. Um, in terms of, uh, um, you know, we've really got to give that some thought. A lot of people buy the license plates because they're only going to one park, like let's say Sunapee. Right. And that's our selling point is if you're going to one park a lot, you know, you're, you're, you know, that's why we want you to get it. And I don't know how many people, people focus on certain parks. And so I don't see, I don't, I don't anticipate we get a lot of people that are buying the plate and then hitting every park in the system. They buy it because then they can end up getting into Monadnock all the time. They have their park they want to go to all the time. So if we go this route, the problem is, is the structure that underlying structure starts to fall apart, and my we're doing really well with like my goal is ten thousand plates, but we get to the point where it's diminishing returns, and then we look 30, 40, 50 years down the road as we have with other exemptions in the fee package, and all of a sudden Tamworth has ten times as many residents, and we have this in other cases, and it and most of the people using the park are getting into it for free, and so you know looking long term for the sustainability of the park system. I, it, it's a it's a um, it's a difficult one, and I will say I have thought the same thing. Is there something we can do with the towns? And I haven't I haven't quite figured that out yet, uh, but I have been giving it thought. I don't know that there is. I'm not sure messing with the plate is the way to go, um, but um, I, I am giving it some thought, and I'll probably be talking with it with the state park system advisory council too about what would be appropriate given it's a statewide resource. We, we might. Um and you might see less diminution of, uh, because not too many of us camp at the at White Lake, and that's certainly a source of revenue, for the campground, and the, that, that, is that your main source of? Yeah, that's the significant source of revenue. Yeah, we don't do that, so yeah. we're probably not affected uh, your revenue. Yeah, that, right. yeah, that's a, that's that's correct. We. Although we do have a lot of day use, we still have we do still have a fair amount of day use, and we we run out of day use because the campers are there on Sunday afternoons after they're done camping, and we've got to deal with that one. But to try to make sure that everybody's getting treated equitably, so but the but I mean one of the things we've done with some of the towns is we let them buy, and this doesn't address your concern. We let them buy a a, a season's pass for the library. And to allow multiple people to use it, which we wouldn't do normally. I mean, a season's pass is not transferable, but we let it so that people in town, if they can't, you know, if they're really strapped and they need to go <coughs> to the, the park, we let the towns buy that. I know that the we don't charge a premium. I know the museum, I was told by uh, the uh, librarian who runs, I think, the National Public Library, that um, the uh, Museum of Science and Industry down in uh, Boston charges a premium for that sort of library pass. You know, we don't charge a premium, we, we charge what we would normally charge. So there is that part of it. We have several towns that actually do use that and make the passes available in the library. You know, as I listen, it sounds like there's a lot of headaches for you guys from owning White Lake. You could <laughs> sign it over and that would solve everyone's issues here. Well, well, I, have, 
Maybe not White Lake, I have some other properties. <laughs> well, we'll get Mark's list and we'll move on to yours. Uh, even though you're striking out with the board here on support for the moorings, Kevin, we'll give you a couple minutes if you want to throw some commentary right. at uh, um, Philip, be on camera. Really quick, uh, the status quo we left that other meeting. Um, I was extremely disappointed about it all um, because both with the town and the state, neither party has moved forward to A, address environmental concerns immediately and enhancement of public recreation. Okay. <coughs> or access to Tamworth Conservation Committee land. No one's doing nothing. Um, the only thing the state has done is put forward a proposal of more restrictions and regulations, um, and asking the town to agree upon them. Uh, I've presented to the Board of Select uh, a request to address some of these environmental issues. I've consulted with the Tamworth Conservation Committee um, for input upon ways to <clears throat> naturally enhance filtration of silt and etc. Um, you know, restrict the, the silt. Um, I've spoken with the Environmental Protection Agency, and uh, there's a lot of things that can be done without going full hog permit from EPA to uh, address some environmental issues there. There's some very, very, very simple issues as to parking and the people that will be going down in there. Um, Tamworth residents pass the gate type thing, move two car spots away from the waterfront and add those four up by the tree where the sign is, no parking beyond the air. But th these are all things that need to be put together in proposal. So I'm gonna stop on that. I'm extremely disappointed that the environment was first on the list with the state and the town. Now that road is a town road, I firmly believe. It always has been a town road. That lake has always been a great pond until the state in, Jan in January classified that road as a class three state road, which changed White Lake from being a great pond in the state of New Hampshire to a waterway totally within the side of a state park, which exempts it from any great pond regulations and rules. So White Lake at this point, and the reason I have pulled my moorings, is no longer a great pond. The state owns that lake, and they can do whatever they wish with it. They can enforce rules, uh, rules and regulations as they see fit on a waterway. <coughs> And that's it. It's no longer a great <clears throat> one. And the only way the state could obtain the reclassification <clears throat> of that from a great pond status to a private state park lake was to reclassify a town road without compensation or eminent domain procedures. Thank you, Kevin. Now, we're going to really quick, I'm going to talk fast and I'm going to have topic. This morning thing, I'm sick and tired of it, okay? The state of New Hampshire has six lakes with moratoriums. They are the big six. Every other lake in the state of New Hampshire is considered a great pond if it's 10 acres or greater. The 50-foot shorefront that you had quoted is the rules and regulations for placing a mooring on the big six. The only lakes with any mooring restrictions. The only, re the only requirements of any mooring on a great pond in the state of New Hampshire is that it does not create a navigational hazard and it is approved by Marine Patrol, which those moorings have been. However, you took the lake from great pond status, the moorings are officially legal by your regulations because you, the state park, own the lake now. The swimming. The state park says no swimming here, you have to swim in here. The state park does not have a lifeguard or buoys, a designated swimming area, until the last week of June, and it's soon to be taken down and the lifeguard sent home. So that's two and a half months out of a year that there is a lifeguard in a designated swimming area. What are we going to do for the other ten months that we want to go swimming? And who's to say and designate where we can be? There's a lifeguard there only mid-morning to early evening. So say, to say that 
you have to have a lifeguard on duty to swim in a specific area is a park regulation, and that's fine for within their park. But to swim anywhere in that lake, okay? Thank you. What are we going to do I in the other 10 months? I, I don't think that people swim there after Labor Day and before Father's Day. <clears throat> you would know the lifeguard does not come in until the last week of June. June, it was June 11th when the buoys went up this okay. year, and and uh, they're soon to be released. They're going to be down by on Labor Day, but there's and so will the designated swimming area be removed at that time? Correct. Okay. But that's a swim of your so, own risk deal, as is. If we, they want to make a regulation no swimming unless you're in a designated area. You can only swim within that area when they have those buoys in that area. Swim within a designated area only during the times in which the designated area is clearly right. designated. They won't control the whole lake yeah. year round when they only. I don't think we got to worry too much about that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, Could you well, have something real quick, Becky? I just wanted to make sure I heard them right. That is a motorized. It's not just carry top because everything that's now printed out there regarding White Lake says carry top only water. And I know since 1934 there have been motorized boats on that lake because I got the engine that was out there. But you had mentioned so that earlier. We can now put motorized boats back out there. The intent, my understanding, the history of the, at least the recent history, was it was a, sort of more of a carry in, carry out um, a boat um, launch area. But I also understand people have been trailering boats in. With, mo with motors and, and, and using that. And as far as I know, uh, um, as far as I know, that has not been a con of concern with my staff. So, um, you know, if, if it's a no way to make, you don't have conflicts with swimmers and canoeists and all that kind of stuff. So, our, that's, that's my. And then my only other question is the mooring. I'm going to say then that when you have campers come in and camp, that you give them written permission to moor their canoes and stuff on the side of the lake. Because there are canoes from the beach area, from the lifeguard shack down, that get tied by chain to the trees and stuff. And then at the waterfront property, the same thing happens. So I'm assuming that if you check with those campers, they have written permission to moor their canoes. I know we... we do give temporary mooring permits. I don't know whether they did for those, but I can certainly look into that. I mean, just to keep everything the same so there's no question, because that's where a lot of, I think, the questions come, because one year it's enforced this way, and the next year it's enforced that way, and the next year it's enforced this way. So right. if we can get the rules so they're all enforced consistently, I would love that too. Yep. it would be nice. <laughs> And I'm trying. <laughs> so thank you for pointing that out because I will I will talk to the staff about about um, making sure they do that. All right. I think we're done with with this topic. Thank you for everybody for showing up okay. and commentary from the audience and so Could forth. I make one statement, one sentence. Is it something you just discuss with Philip outside so we can keep moving? Um, Pretty well beat this one. It, no, it, it's, I'd like to ask the board of selectmen <coughs> to uh, not agree signing any um, conditions or agreements such as the proposal that the state moved forward without uh, town input from its citizens. We appreciate your okay. comments, Kevin. I think that decision should be enhanced by the town's people and not just the board of directors. <clears throat> All right. New business. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. More of this? I um, received a phone call uh, and asked if DOT has gotten to a point of responding to our home visit. Yep. And they have some preliminaries that I would like to give you, and then there will be a formal letter coming from Bill to ask. I'll leave you a copy. It's an email. Uh, when Darlene uh, asked me, I went to them and they came back with some short. So. That's good. <clears throat> so, um, says, hello, Mark. I need to consolidate various feedback and thoughts from our Tamworth visit into a follow-up response to the town, similar to what we did in Freedom. We had a similar thing. My goal uh, is this week, he has uh, four points in short. 
we wouldn't we wouldn't advocate changing the speed limit, but would strike narrower ten foot lanes approaching the village to provide minimum shoulder when paved this year to eliminate the passing zone. Uh, second was we looked at making the intersection uh, a four-way stop. Uh, while we wouldn't do exactly that, we would consider addressing the concern with some modification that he outlines in, in item number six, which you are going to get. Okay. So they have some recommendations. Uh, next is we'll address remarking the crosswalk at the school following the paving. Mm -hmm. Sounds like they'll take care of that. And the last item is will we work with the town on better delineating pedestrian crossings at the Four Corners intersection. Okay. Sorry for the rushed response and somewhat jumbling information, but want to have something for you tomorrow night. Great. Thank you. Don't you don't want me to come here and you yell at us. Mark, would you, would you read the, this, the thing about the four-way stop again? They're not interested in the four-way stop. Um, the item four, which is would we, we would work with the town on better delineating the pedestrian crossings in the four-way. I'm sorry, the item you asked. Uh, we looked at making the intersection a four-way stop. But we wouldn't do exactly that. We would consider addressing the concern, excuse me, with some modifications as outlined in number six. I'll go to six for you, instead of leaving a teaser. <laughs> Should we consider a four-way stop at the 113 113A intersection? These were comments that came out of their internal comments. Uh, town noted a petition for such uh, that they didn't pass on, but opted to ask us to look at at this meeting with uh, Kenny. Um, the concern is NB traffic flying right by, northbound traffic flying right by. While predominant movement is northbound on 113, I don't think a brief stop at the four-way would impede traffic too much, and is it warranted? Uh, can we try temporarily as a pilot, they're thinking of doing a pilot program, to evaluate how it works before a, per a permit decision? Mm -hmm. So I, they want to work with you to figure it out. Uh, we've looked at this a number of times over the years. The primary concern has been the site distance to the stop condition over the vertical cur crest curve. Mike and I discussed this and would support separating the traffic uh, going through to 113A from traffic continuing on 113 uh, with a small pork chop island. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, we would control the through traffic uh, with a stop sign and either control the northbound 113 traffic, uh, such as uh, a yield, or leave it with no control. They're putting a lot of thought to what you want. Mm -hmm. It looks like they're willing to do uh, a pilot and work with you and we'll see what makes sense. Good deal. Thank you for that. Okay, so but the commissioner will follow up with a uh, with a formal letter Great. in the next week. Or so. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Well, so we actually have changed some of our old business. We've covered it now. Mm. Thanks to Mark. So we're oh, yeah. I just, no, that's no, good. That's I can change where it says no change. So it's like at the home when somebody asks me to do something, <laughs> I have to do it. So I like that. Uh, Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks. You. Thank MS4. I'm sorry? MS4. Yep. That's not It's all set to go in. Okay. So if you want to take a look at that. We don't motion on this, though, do we? No. Anyway, so. And amendments to our personnel policy. Those are all things that we have discussed in meetings yep. past. Um, I'm just going to actually change the policy itself. And insert Amend the changes. It, insert the changes yep. instead of waiting until we... Yep. Start picking away at maybe. Right. And that makes sense because we've already passed the changes now. We're going to be that and much just less. Make sure work they sound okay. Through. They look yep. like they were supposed to. Okay. Um, I just, a few things on the administrative update um, <coughs> the new uh, transfer station um, employee is going to start on September 6th. Oh, good. Tentative. Yeah. Um, so he was in yesterday and he filled out all his paperwork. Um, are you interested in meeting with the state reps in Albany? Is that next Monday or is it's, that September? Um, Monday, no, the 28th. And she does want an RCP if anybody's planning on attending. That's this, it's this coming, Monday coming. This mm -hmm. coming Monday. Yeah. No, okay. Uh, actually, They've been doing this once a year, and it's not a bad thing. 
No, it's not. But all we've got to do is fight with the honestly, White Lake people and they come to us anyway. Yeah, I'm going to... I've, I've had a good time because <coughs> they, they tell you what's coming up. So you you going to attend? Yeah, I'm planning on it. Okay, I'll, I'll let her know. Thank you. Do you have a plus one, Steve, so they can make sure that the meal is set for everybody? I assume it's a catered event, so you might want to let them know if you're bringing something. No, and you got to and you got to fold up the chairs and rack them at the end. <laughs> they should have it here. We leave these out all the time. All right. I think that's about it. I think you can read everything else that's okay. on here. All right. Now the exciting parts. I have uh, selectman meeting minutes from August seventeenth, two thousand seventeen. Uh, motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Non-public meeting minutes uh, from July 27th, 2000. Did we do this one? No, that was only the two of them and okay. at one point somebody wasn't here. Or oh, that's right. You, All right. Are you not signing that one? No, no, I'm going to abstain. Uh, Non-public meeting minutes from July 27th, 2017. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Abstain? Uh, Non-public minutes from August 17th, 2017. Uh, motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Meeting minutes from Thursday, July 27th, 2017. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Abstain? I'll do Jesse after the other stuff. We have appointment forms for Peter Vandalan and Mark Anthony for their help on the oral board interview for the Tamworth chief position. Um, motion to approve Peter Vandalan and Mark Anthony. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Intent to cut. From at 412, lot 12, uh, and lot 29 and 28 as well. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, accounts payable check registered manifest in the amount of 192.51. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Accounts payable check register and manifest in the amount of 276-534-92. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, checkmate payroll authorization in the amount of 37-562-22. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Accounts payable check register and manifest in the amount of $11.54. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This one. This one. Well, the sticky's on the back. It's easy to miss. <laughs> See, we're spoiled. The two places are signed on that. I signed. Yeah. So you signed one of it. The okay, first and the second. Oh. See, we're spoiled. You guys typically fold the minutes to where they're headed the right way, and we don't look at these ones. All right. And the other thing is Jesse Lyman heating oil and propane uh, contract. Um, I think you weren't here at the meeting. We talked about that. I was going to say, this is... Also what we expected, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, number two heating oil is 182.9, LP is 117.9, summer blend diesel is 182.9, uh, winter blend from November to March is 222.9. Uh, we'll make a motion that we approve this contract with Jesse Lyman Heating and Propane for the 2018 season. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
I missed anything. I don't know if the selectmen have any updates. Or oh, I meant from oh, this. Yeah, no, we're good. Do you have any updates, Steve? TC is a good, I don't know. The <laughs> Conservation Commission's got a mushroom they're walk. They're going to think the video's wrong when they watch it. On uh, September 3rd, 9 to 11.30 at Big Pine. I think there's... Uh, they also have somebody from Green Mountain Conservation Group tentatively attending their September meeting about groundwater protection that might be of interest to a number of folks. They're also uh, going to contact the fire chief or the uh, chairman of the wards about uh, additional cutting up on a um, fire tower. Uh, they also were in re receipt of a letter of their concerns about uh, access to Irene's Way. Planning Board's got a work session on the 13th of um, September. They did a subdivision that was approved with conditions. They did a uh, boundary line adjustment that was approved with conditions. They did a subdivision conceptual review, and another that, uh, there was another subdivision set, conceptual review postponed, and they had a subdivision application that was postponed. One of, one of these... Uh, Subdivision applications included land that uh, was, belonged to Florence Luscombe. Who knew? Florence Luscombe is this major New Hampshire uh, visitor with a place in Tamworth who changed the world. There's a book about her over at the uh, library that we should all read, according to one of the agents who was familiar with it. And uh, that's it. Do you have anything, Dan? Nope. I haven't had anything since we met a week ago. <laughs> uh, old business. Uh, there's been a little discussion about Irene's Way. Not really? Just a little. Everybody, I think, is aware of where we are with that. Uh, sandwich perambulation has no change, unless you get a surprise. Mm -hmm. no. uh, in Tamworth Road, I think everybody heard the updates uh, from Mark that we have a, a quick response. We'll get more. Uh, back, but the state is considering our concerns about speed on 113, safety of the intersection here at the Four Corners, and uh, restriping the crosswalk, which will happen when paving happens. Um, everybody's all set. We'll open up for public comment. And I'll ask that everybody be brief because the White Lake stuff took forever, like it always does. Bruno, what you got? No. Stop thinking. Anything okay? No. <clears throat> I'm not exactly teased. like my I'm, son. Yeah. Jack. Yeah, just a question on the CIP. We talked about the roof and whether or not we want to keep that in the plan or whether 50000 is too much, too little in between, whatever. Have we had a chance to... Yeah. Do right out back. I know, we could get them over here. I was going to say, when they're here, just say, by the way, guys. Yes, yeah, look at this roof, will you? <laughs> I could do that. Yeah. I was going to say, we'll lure them in with cold water or something like I that, and then say, that. well, you're here. Oh, soda. They're cleaning out the other store out of soda. Oh, That's soda. Yeah. So <laughs> if we go to Katie's and get a couple get cans a couple of Pepsi, sodas. we can flag them okay. down. All right. Are they always parked out back? They have been. Yeah, really. The last couple Because I saw them when I came in. They yeah. Were... Yeah. I thought they were taking care of this one, too. I mean, uh, it's amazing what you get for 74000 or whatever it was. All right. We will make a point to... To get something we haven't forgotten. Okay. <coughs> Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Oh. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Do you want the roll call for the adjournment too, just like a non public? Hidden eye, gray eye. Well, I don't think it has to be. That was a joke, oh. because he always reminds us to do the, the roll for the non public. See, he could be mean and let us screw up and let everybody watch the videos of us doing it wrong. Oh, anything about what? Know.